Hello there, welcome back. It's me, RJB, and it's time for another video. So this is a set of replays requested by Trisha himself for me to cast. So I'm going to dive right in without further ado and bring you some of that StarCraft goodness. Now the two players you've already seen in the, in, in the intro are Trisha himself, who's on the name 1D day user one one day one user i assume that means one versus one user not too sure i'm not gonna jump to conclusions that's what i think he's here on the protoss on the bottom left of the map and his opponent is here called camera and camera is the player jh also known as Voss. and he's here on the terran as usual because he is kind of a terran main player whereas trisha i assume is a protoss main player now we have seen Trisha and JH on this channel quite a couple of times. So we kind of already have an idea of what their skill levels are, respectively, of course. So let's dive into what they will be doing. JH, of course, always starts off with a depot on a supply and then, of course, follows it up with a supply depot on nine supply. And then of course follows up with another barracks at 10. And of course this one is also going to be building a barracks right there. Or maybe he's going to turn it onto the minerals first and build a barracks with the next SCV on 12th. And the idea behind this is that you want to have your marines out as fast as you can. So you can defend against any potential offensive maneuvers from the Protoss. Because they can be quite dangerous. And having more marines out quicker... And if you were to go for a 9 barracks, as a lot of fastest map players do, you would be fighting with one less marine. And that can make a difference. And eventually it turns into two less marines, three less marines. And then I think it kind of stays on three less marines than you would if you didn't do this. So that little adaptation can make a huge difference in your ability to defend against zealots or cannon rushes or a proxy mid-build from the Protoss. But Trisha is actually going for no offensive build order, he's going for an economic build order, trying to boost his macro up by a little bit, but going for the plus one nexus first, and then transitioning into that forge gateway and a choke there in the front where he's now, now adding on more cannons than before. Cybercore also coming in, double assimilated there on the side as well. GH is scouting with the marines. And yeah, he's just gonna play this one very safely it appears although he's already adding on a gas before adding on a command center which means he's trying to be aggressive here if he were to delay the gas and add on command centers first you could conclude that he would be going for a macro build order but that early gas leads me to believe he's going to add on an academy gets him upgrade and try to rush in through the front here with marines it's something he really likes to do and something that is oftentimes very worth it because sometimes the Protoss just is cutting it too close to the to the corner, too close to the edge, and you can catch them off guard by stimming in at around the 4.50 or the 5 minute mark with I think about 3 or 4 medics and about 12 or 16 marines. It's definitely worth it, and you should definitely try it sometime, but there's the plus one command center, so he is planning on boosting his economy a little bit, he doesn't have an academy just yet, but he's going to be coming in right here right now. That's an no, it's a depot, alright, academy should be coming in very soon though, he's going for a factory first. So he's going for another option that you have to be to put pressure on the, the Protoss and that is getting an early tank and he's going to build maybe something here in the front to try and push this in before Trisha can get anything offensive out on the map. But it's going to be very risky and he's going to be pushing it very close to the edge. Academy now coming in there though. Trisha already has a Cybercore finish and Citadel of Dune on the way and two Robots are on the way as well. And do know Trisha is a very good Reaver Shuttle Micro user. That might spell some trouble here for JH if JH does not get anything done very soon because he will be facing against a double reaver shuttle with some zealots with probably zealot lags here in the very near future although Trisha has not yet added on gateways but I do think he's going to add on gateways right about now although at the moment he's also adding on another assimilator meaning he wants more gas which might lead me to conclude he might not be going for all that many gateways after all but instead going all in on his tech there's the shuttle speed zealot lags are not coming in because he doesn't need it 
shuttle there about to be finishing up. He's got the robo there finishing up at about the same time. So we can queue up two weavers there at the same time as well. To of course coincide with the finishing of the shuttle. The Deering Bay there coming in from camera. Or JH. Factor number two there as well. He's got a tank there. Ori. No, no tanks yet. Has not yet finished. He just finished the machine shop. So Siege Mod and the tank there are on the way, adding a fourth barracks. We're very comfortably sitting on 27 SCVs against Trisha's 37. Steam upgrade there on the way, more depots being added on. And JH is gonna be building a turret there. The turret, of course, functions as detection for Dark Templars. He also is adding on a scan here, although it's already finished. So we can use that scan in case he needs the scan to detect Dark Templars. But I don't think Dark Temple is going to be on the way here from Trisha. He is ending on gateways. He is not yet researched. There is Psionic Storm. Shadow Speed is almost finished. One Reaver is finished and another Reaver there also. Well, he made a mistake there, I think. Because usually you queue up two Reavers, but he queued up one. This one is a little bit delayed. But he has another shuttle there finished up as well. Reaver there trying to kill some Marines. Kill some Marines, but Marines are now retreating. He's going to have to kill that turret there first. He's going to pick up that Reaver, keep it out of harm's way from that tank. Kills the Reaver there, so now he can fly closer to these units with his shuttle without losing the shuttle to the turret. Dark Templar is out. He killed the turret, so there is no longer detection for the Dark Templar, but there is detection right here being built there in the front. Dark Templar is moving out over the map. He's going to try to do some recon to see whether he can go in through the front here or has to go in through the sides. Turrets are being built there around the command center to protect the command center from shuttles and from Dark Templars, but there's still a wide open area all over the map here, all over his base, where he is not yet protected from drops. He does have Marines there to intercept them. He does not yet have a wall there in the front. Dark Templar there going to look and try to find something. I think he's going to try to look for a path here on the top side to see if there's anything there on the top side that can potentially spot out the shuttles. There's one Reaver with a Zealot in there, another uh, shuttle with another Reaver and a Zealot. So two Reavers, two Zealots, two shuttles. Going to come in from the top side there. JH is expecting something from the bottom side. He's moving all his Marines to the bottom side, but it actually he's going to be attacked from the top side. That is a grief miscalculation there from JH. And in he goes. Flies in. Lands there right next to the command center. Reaver Scarabs are shooting. He's not yet killing the turret there, so the shuttles are staying out of harm's way. Reavers are in the back. Reavers are gonna get taken down by the Marines. Marines are stemming in to the fray, spreading out quite nicely, getting some kills there, and eventually this clean up all Marines there. But JH in the end clears out the drop attempt there from Trisha. The Trisha is already whoa, wait, what's this? Ooh, Storm Drop came out from the bottom side. He's storming on the SCVs, but he misses the SCVs there completely as JH dodges there to the side. So pretty well held there from JH, a lot of lost mining time there, but he at least doesn't lose any of his SCVs to that drop attempt by Trisha. So he stays alive for a little while longer, but another drop there already being sent out by Trisha. Dark Templar there also moving into the middle of the map, and I think he has three high Templars in there. There's going to be a lot of storms there that JH will have to deal with, and JH currently still has no vision off his sides. There's no turrets on the sides either, there's only a couple of marines there on the bottom side, none of them on the top side, so this will be impossible to intercept. There's a tank there though, tank at the bottom side there as well, ready to kill the Templars, but I think he's just going to fly in very slowly and closely, close to the edge there, he's going to land there next to the SCVs there, he kills none of the SCVs there, although he killed, no, he killed two of them. But he only gets a single storm off as the shuttle dies, and the Templars there on the Logan get taken down by the Marines and the tanks. And the SVs there once again staying alive there for JH, but another drop there already being loaded up, and his base is growing bigger and bigger. He has finished his Zealot lags, he got level 1 weapon on the way there as well, he's got Templar Energy 2 there being researched, and he's got armor for his shuttles there also, so they don't die that quickly to stim Marines or turrets, but he's flying in from the bottom side here. Nothing there in between, JH not yet responding because he's not seeing it, he sees it now, he tries to snipe the shuttles. Templar there on the logo, Templar Storm, Templar kills the SCVs there and JH being very sloppy there with his drop dodge and doesn't dodge at all. Thinking he would be safe given he had so many units here around his command center to kill the Templar, but the Templar stayed alive for a little bit too long, gets the storm off and JH is looking is looking to find himself in a very bad situation here because this looks like Trisha is going to come out on top here because Trisha has all the things he needs in place. Although tank drop here coming in from JH is trying to kill some pros, but he finds that there's too many cannons there. Zealous there as well, so he just turns around, flies away back to the hill and waits for another chance. But another chance might not show itself because this is pretty well plugged up. There's no spot here to land whatsoever before the tanks die, although he's gonna try nonetheless. But drops coming in from into his base there as well, is it going to work? He's going to load in here on the bottom side, drop it goes down, tank goes down, drop comes in here in his own base as well. Will this one hit? There's a lot of units in there. 
A lot of Tempires are loading, Zealous are loading there as well. One Storm, two Storm. He kills all the SVs once again. Jahaz didn't even bother to dodge. And Jahaz calls the GG. That's the first win there for Trishan. Quite an interesting little mistake there. Well, not little, but big mistakes there from Jahaz. Who played this game really well, but couldn't come out on top as the mistakes wound up costing him all of his SCVs. And that's a pretty simple and quick win there for Trisha. Which we don't often see in regards to JH. Usually JH has pretty good drop defense. This time around, he kind of flopped it and also went for a very low eco build, so he didn't have all that much in his base because his SV count was simply lower than it could have been if he had gone for a plus two command center after he scouted this choke here. But he always wants to be that player who tries to push his luck and tries to be aggressive, but it oftentimes it doesn't work. So anyway, let's go for game number two and see how that one pans out. The score at the moment is 1-0 in favor of Trisha. So, I wanted to clarify why I haven't been making videos for almost an entire week. Um, my country, the Netherlands, has been under the attack of a heat wave, basically. And I am particularly bad with really hot weather. The temperatures have been around 35 degrees Celsius for the last eight or so days. And the temperatures um, in my house has been increasing steadily to about 29 to 30 degrees. Because, well, here in the Netherlands, people don't consider the requirement of having air conditioning that, that important, basically. They don't think it's important because usually we have like two or three days of 30 degrees every single year but this year has been a bit um, different also I'm gonna have to ask so yeah like uh, someone else is watching the replay alongside me but he's lagging the replay by quite a bit so that's why we're having this lag right here As you can see he's dropping out of the game right now so I'm sorry but this is gonna be a very slow process also gives me some time to explain, or actually I'm just gonna pause that for a bit. So yeah, he's out of the game, he dropped. Kind of unfortunate, but you know what happens. Alright, so, um, yeah, the weather is 34, 35 degrees during the day. Nobody in the Netherlands has air conditioning. A few people do, most people don't, because we think it's unnecessary. Although I think in the future people are going to buy more air conditioning here to deal and cope with these absolutely terrifyingly horrible, terrible temperatures. So yeah, um, usually the room I sit in gets very, very hot. The temperature in that room can go up to 35 degrees because it's in the sun the entire day. Right now I'm sitting in the living room, it's still 29 30 degrees in here. It's kind of intolerable, but you know what, I figured I gotta stop being a pussy and just go and make some videos, which I'm doing right now. So yeah, back to the game itself. Um, we've got the camera here, JH on the Terran once again, and Trisha once again on the Protoss, and he's doing the same build as last game around, going for the plus one Nexus into a Forge, into a Choke, of course, followed up by a Gateway and two Canister in the front. But JH is right next to him, and JH being right next to him might spell some trouble, because JH will find this right here with that Marine that he's sending out now, because that Marine is going to go and scout the top side there, which means that JH is going to pull some offensive maneuvers here, although he's going to get spotted out by this pro before it arrives. So that means that Trisha can start making and building a response to it. He's going to add two more cannons here in the front, I think, to build him by himself some time as a buffer. So these cannons can finish, more marines there on the way, SV there on the way as well. Going here to the top, so the probe there has arrived there to fight that marine off. And the marine is going to get scared away, forced away, he's going to die there to the probes. And buys himself enough time for this cannon to finish up there, so it won't go down. SV and marine there won't arrive on time, he's going to have to pull back there and Trisha secures his choke. Now if that SCV here had gone to the top side first, I think this could have been a different story as JH could probably have tried or probably have broken through that single cannon there despite the ropes, but it's not to be, not today. JH now going for a plus two command center, like I suggested he should have done last game. He discontinues marine production, adds on the gas after the two command centers, gonna build an academy and a depot there as well after he resumes his marine production. Trisha here is gonna build a cannon here on the bottom side just to make sure that no barracks is flown over the hill to get a firebat run there on the probes, kill the probes there with a firebat. 
But that's not going to happen anytime soon. Cybernetic score there finishing up, which means we're going to be seeing gas income coming to the point where he can start constructing. Did the gas just go down? Did the gas just go? No. It was weird. I, I thought I saw 200 gas, but then it went down to 170 out of nowhere, but he didn't build or construct anything whatsoever. But it must have been my eyes deceiving me. So a robo facility there coming in. Robo facility number two is going to be coming in after the Citadel of Dune, so he has the timing exactly right for that second robo. And yeah, we're seeing the academy not... Yo, know, there's the academy. So the academy is coming in there from JH. He's adding on more marines there and sending them here to the front or here to this choke. He's got a factory there coming in as well. So both players are preparing themselves for the confrontation that should be coming up at about the 6 minute mark. Maybe 6.20, maybe 6 minutes itself. Usually it's somewhere right in between. Because that's the timing. The shuttle speed finishes up and the shuttle has two reavers to pick up and fly over. Now the players being very close to each other is actually quite advantageous for either player. If Trisha gets a hit off on JH, he can do some real damage continuously by simply spamming out attacks. Now, however, if JH manages to fight off all these attempts from, J from Trisha, then JH will be in the driver's seat because he is so close to his opponent and can put some real pressure out on his opponent. Trisha here going for something quite unconventional, going for two Dragoons to zone off those Marines that are in the front and potentially kill some of the Marines to reduce the amount of Marines JH has to defend. Now JH is playing it very close to the edge here because he's not making any Marines, he only has four Marines that are in the bunker and he's got five Marines that are in the front with two SCVs. So he is really cutting it close to the edge, although he's now adding on more barracks just to prepare himself for those Reavers that are going to be coming in very soon. But... Well, actually, he does have about, I think, 20 seconds before those Reavers can arrive in his base, maybe even 25 seconds. So he might just have enough time to build more Marines. But the fact that he discontinued his Marine production for so long means he has very little to defend, which means he's going to be cutting it very close to the edge, which means it's going to be... It might actually be a quick game for Trisha, who might deal some decisive blows to JH. But I want to believe in JH because I believe he knows what he's doing. So let's give him the benefit of the doubt and hope that his choice to discontinue marine production for such a long period of time pays off and he gets more tanks out in his base and more economy but we'll just have to wait and see and find out the reavers there have finished more zealots are more zealots and templars are on the way no zealot speed is on the way he's got shuttle speed there almost finished up and he's got Pseudic storm they're also being researched and he's finally adding on cannons as well to protect himself from those tank drops that we saw failing last game as well Let's build a pile there in the front. Not quite sure what he's planning with that one. So two cannons there. He's setting up his tanks to defend himself. He's spacing them out quite well to try and cover as much ground in his base as he can. Two scans there as well to try and keep track of what Trisha is doing. Trisha is waiting for two shuttles to load up so we can go in with two drops there at the same time. Oh, this one's going to go for the front first. Try and peel down something in the front, but there's Zella there. Tanking the shots from Zealot tanking the shots from the tank so the Reavers can do some damage there on the front and try and distract the pull units to the front. He's got a shuttle there up on the high ground, which JH cannot see because the hill denies vision. Shuttles there coming in from the bottom. He's gonna kill those Marines and fly out away to safety, and then maybe gonna go in with that one from the top side as Marines are being drawn to the bottom side. But his turrets are in between, pretty smartly placed there from JH. So he's gonna have to pick up more units. Going with a bigger drop and maybe under the support of a Corsair, although no Corsair, Corsair is on the way. Right, as I mentioned, it, a lot of idle probes here as well, next to his minerals. But at the moment, he's just purely focusing on pulling off these attacks. He's splitting up his shuttles into three different shuttle groups. One here in his base, one there on the bottom side, another one here on the bottom side. He's gonna land there, gonna try to kill the turrets there, maybe kill some marines as they're sent into the fray. And try and open a path for this shuttle with three Templars and a single zealot in there to try and get some kills on those SCVs. But Trister on the bottom side are just about to be finishing up. It's going to be hard for the shuttle to go in there. But first, time to draw some attention away from that shuttle path and maybe get some kills with these Reavers. So he goes into the fight there. Shuttle there on the bottom side also goes in at the same time. It makes its way all the way in. Three Templars. 
The shell goes down right before the Tempos unload because there's simply too many turrets that are in between. But now coming from the top 10 under the support of a Corsair, Shuttle's coming in and loading next to the SCVs. There's a Templar in there, I'm sure. Where is the Templar? Where is there's no Templar in there? It's only only Zealots. He's trying to distract, trying to buy some time, or maybe the Templar went down when it got unloaded. Although now he goes in once again with three Templars, one Zealot. Gonna load that right next to the SCVs. Gonna storm on those SCVs. One storm, two. St no, only a single storm comes out there from Trisha. Fails to connect or even start storm number two and number three as there's simply too many tanks and marines there to prevent that from happening. He's moving on into the next phase of his gameplay, adding on more robotics, more shuttle. So he's going for a very heavy shuttle play. Also trying to storm those tanks behind the depot line here to death, but not quite succeeding. Once again, all those reavers here on the bottom side, still the same two reavers, but the two reavers there go down to tank shots. So now he's just waiting for his next drop. He's from the top side. This might be one of those hard hitting drops, although it's mostly zealots. Once again, no Templars in there. He's just trying to just oh Templars unloaded there at the start. Because he did you click on the shuttle itself, which means it starts unloading whatever is in there from left. Well, from right to left. And it just so happened the Templar was on the far right. So it unloaded first. Quite unfortunate because I think he could have gotten a storm up on those SCVs if the Templar was on the far left instead of the far right in the shuttle. Like, let me demonstrate it. Um, as soon as he loads something up, I can show it. He's going straight into carriers. He's not really going for a gateway mass. He's only got six gateways there to facilitate his shuttles and supply his shuttles with units. But he's mostly, and I think, purely focusing on getting carriers out. And GH, of course, having scans, knows that these carriers are going to be coming in and going to be trying... He's going to try to at least formulate a good answer there. He already has armory there on the way. Armory number two. Two also being on the way there has no star ports yet, which is very uncharacteristic for JH because usually we see him go for an early star port to try and get a dropship off and the two drop tanks, the drop two tanks there on the probes. But this time around, he's not going for that option specifically. Is that he's looks like Trisha is going to sacrifice some of his probes there as well. Drop coming in for the bottom time. This time it's a mass drop. All of Zelda, all of Tempos there in the mix, the loading right next to the SVs while he flies in, but he misses the storm. But there might be more units in those shuttles. Well, the shuttles are apparently empty. But the moment he's just trying to buy time by slowing down GH economy with those drops, although the drops are not very frequent, he's buying himself time for his carriers, which is his main focus. He's got six carriers are on the way, interceptor capacity already finished up. He's got upgrades on the way for his carriers as well. Weapon and armor. And Shuttle's once again going to try to fly in from an angle where he can try to hit those SCVs, but he has not yet succeeded. Although I do think he has not yet been very successful or has pulled off very good drops so far. Maybe JH has just defended them really well. Not quite sure. But the drops have not done much so far. They have slowed down JH a little bit because he has been forced to pull off his SCVs from his minerals time and time again. But no real tangible results have been achieved. Another shuttle there with a Dark Archon is going to try to get a mind control going there as well. Of course, he has a proxy gas income there on the side as well. As well, his, his tech is blocking these last couple of uh, simulators. Goes in from the bottom side. Going to try to get some pro kills this time around. But the Templar allows there at the start. Once again, Storm Marines instead. I think he's got to change his shuttle configuration. Put the Templar in first. And the zealots in last, and then of course you can get those drops more easily with you click on the shuttle itself. But he's not planning on giving Trish any more time because he knows carriers are on the way, and he knows he's got to go in right now, right here. So he goes in at 12 minutes as he has enough factories, he believes, enough barracks, and enough units to try and push into Trisha's base before Trisha's carriers are pretty much too strong for him to handle. There will be 9 carriers once he's finished, but there's 6 already there at the moment. He's almost got all of his interceptors ready for the attack. Temper upon the hillstorm, a lot of marines there, so that kind of hurts JH's ability to fight here, but JH is going to keep on pushing and Trisha is just going to keep progressing into those carriers there. A temple there in the mix as well, turret there coming out in back. 
She's just building all those units here in the front to try and whittle down the anti-air units that JH has. Also, drop here still on the bottom side, so I'm gonna try to pick up and mind control an SCV. And the production here coming in from JH is pretty, pretty good. It's very slowly pushing deeper, very slowly crawling forward, deeper and deeper, getting stronger and stronger. Will those carriers come out in time? He's building a lot of cannons here as a buffer to try and buy himself time. He's sending in units very slowly, one by one, to try and throw stuff at these tanks and goliaths to buy time. As they will soak up some damage. More cannons being built there. Trisha is very close to the edge. He is looking and staring down the barrel of a 45. Will this work? Will JH come out on top here? Although that's 9 carriers there, although not all intercepts have finished. Carrier number 10 there on the top side as well. He does have 5 goliaths here. 4 turrets and about 11 or 12 marines there. A couple of medics there in the mix as well. 4 SCVs there ready to build more turrets. And he forces those carriers back for now. But the 10th carrier joins the fray and he's got two more there on the way. No, three more on the way. He's going to go back in and try to stop the happen. This is very close here. This is cutting it very close. Trisha might have gone for a bull order that might be a little bit too risky because those interceptors are going to go down so quick. Old Templar there comes down, Storm comes down on a couple of Marines and Goliath, so that might help him. Though still a lot of Goliaths, a lot of Goliaths and tanks here, a lot of Marines there as well. And interceptors are having a tough time staying alive. Really having a tough time, although Yaoi goes in with the Dark Archon. Going to try to mind control something here on the side. He's out of range. He gets the SCV mind control. Going to pick it up, fly right out. And I think he's going to try to build a base there somewhere on the side while trying to buy as much time as he can here in his base, hoping to stay alive. I do think Trisha didn't go over a very solid build order. I personally am not a fan of mind controls, but this might be those one of those games where a mind control actually makes the game exciting. So he goes back in. Still not getting much progress with those carriers as the pushback is not happening. It's only 10 carriers, or is it 12? 12 carriers there, one more there on the top side. The Goliaths there are pretty strong. Dark Temple there is Dark Temples are doing some work, but detection there behind the, the, the turrets there are detecting the Dark Templars, so once they get too close, they just simply go down. And do not know that JH is doing this on only nine factories. He's adding one more factories now, trying to keep up his production with those carriers. The carriers are very slowly picking off units there, staying on top of the hill to try and deny vision of the carriers themselves. You can see right here, the carriers cannot be detected, but the interceptors nonetheless are being taken down pretty damn quick, which limits the amount of effectiveness that this approach has from Trisha. He is very slowly managing to reduce the amount of units here in his base, but he is still losing pretty much half of his base here, very slowly but surely. And JH now having more Goliaths, more tanks crawling up, is gonna get some stuff done. Still a lot of turrets are in the back. The turrets are gonna have to encroach deeper and deeper. A lot of buildings are being hovered all over the map to get more map vision. As you can see here, he's got the command center on the bottom. Scans coming out from JH. He's scanning the base here. Scanned the map there as well, although it didn't appear on when I turned off Trisha's vision. But Trisha here is getting pushed back. He's getting pushed back and life's being made very difficult for him. Both players are having have, have a lot of bank. Patricia is so occupied defending that at the moment he's not really building anything. He's not even focusing on his command center there on the bottom side. Although storms coming in there and the storms are doing a lot of work there, and a lot of units here from JH have somehow gone down. He lifted up all of his barracks, which means no more marines, and he might, maybe it would have been a better choice to keep those marines alive, because stim marines with medics do a lot of damage against those interceptors, and at the moment it looks like Trisha is on the pushback here, as a lot of goliaths, pretty much all the goliaths that were there have gone down, turrets now going down there as well, is this all because he has superior upgrades, he's level 2 weapon, 2 armor, 1 shield, whereas JH is on 1 for marines, level 1, 1, 1 for his mech. This air is on one weapon, zero armor. And that might just be the difference maker here because those level 2 upgrades on those carriers are pretty massive. Oh, he's gonna kill the, the proxy base here. So he managed to find that once, used this scan to kill it. So that's working out really well there for JH. He's even gonna try to get some gas going there as well. 
And yeah, the carriers here have managed to break through somehow. Not quite sure how. JH was doing a really good job there pushing and advancing. But the number of carriers here, even though it's only 14 or 15 carriers, are doing a lot of work here. The Goliaths are not enough. And those very small amounts of Zealots coming in to kill the tanks and ground forces are also doing more work than I would have thought they would do. Somehow Trisha is making the miracle comeback. He managed to keep his commands in there alive, but Goliaths are on the way to finish it off. So no mind control going to be impacting this game whatsoever. Carriers there on quite low HP, there's only 10 of them left alive. Goliaths, oh, 9 of them left alive. Goliaths are doing a lot of work there. But JH at the moment is trying to transition into raids. He's keeping most of the Goliaths in his base. He's not yet moving out. He's not. He's actually giving Trisha time here, which I don't agree with. I think he should keep the pressure up, but I think he's balling up his mass. He's expecting Trisha to fly in with his carriers, so he's balling up all of his Goliaths here in his base, waiting for Trisha to commit. Also placing his uh, raids there as well to intercept them. He's got Cloak, of course. Wait, Cloak is still on. No, that's energy. That's energy. So he's going in once again with his Goliaths. He's no longer waiting for Trisha to come out and move and attack. Instead, he's once again the aggressor here. And the carriers are moving back a little bit. There's the Reavers are in the mix as well. They do a lot of damage to this mech there, but the Reavers there do go down to the tanks and the Goliaths eventually. He's got Corsairs here too, of course, because Corsairs are amazing against Rays, but he has no detection there. He forgot to make his detection, although the Rays are flying into those cannons voluntarily. So they do get detected, which means they're going to go down very quick without really getting any results. So he did kill about two or three carriers there. And look at this, JH is having the push of a lifetime. The carriers there are going to go down very quick, very soon, but he's at the moment not focusing on the carriers because he's producing units, but the Oh, Goliath, the carriers are on such low HP. He's building a proxy base here on the side, but a proxy base there got found by JH. He's now trying to kill it, but Zealots and Dragoons here are on the way. He only has three units there trying to take down their proxy base. He kills down most of the units here in his base. All the Goliaths there have gone down. Now he's going to try to save his proxy base there. But will he be in time? Will he be in time? JH is a little bit slow on rebuilding his mass because he has so many factories, but so few machine shops. So you can pretty much only build Goliaths. But Trisha once again staying alive, barely though, because he barely lost all of his carriers there. Three more carriers have arrived to reinforce the ones he has. Got a couple more there on the way, ready to be finishing up. Goliaths, no dragoons are moving out over the middle of the map, trying to intercept the stream of units coming from JH's base. JH is a little bit lagging behind there with his Goliaths, but... Ooh, drop comes in. This is going to be massive. This is going to be massive. There's nothing in the drop. He's going to kill those tourists there on the top side with his reavers. Units here on the middle of the map are distracting him quite heavily. Level 1 1 upgrade still, he's got level 2 on the way. Whereas Trisha, I think, is already on level 3 for his air. So JH is uncharacteristically lagging behind with his upgrades, which we don't often see. He's two whole tiers of upgrades behind. And the carrier mass for Trisha has once again restored itself, so he's gonna hang his carriers there up on the hill. Goliath's incapable of targeting them because he needs something there in the air to see it. A bit of a sloppy play here from JH. JH is moving forward. Focusing on, oh, he's closing the scan. There's no. Oh, there's an observer. Rays are coming in, but there's a Corsair there as well. And those rays are going to go down very quick because the Corsairs are being ignored and attacking. He's not killing the observer there either. But he kills one of the carriers there in the end, but loses all of his rays there as well. Now he has to make choices. Is he going to go kill this proxy base there where units are being built, or is he going to try to push in the main base? But which does open up his front there because that means that the units will be here and not here to fight. There's Dark Tempest being made there as well, gonna try to intercept units here coming in. Goliaths are having a tough time fighting against the carriers because they simply lack the necessary upgrades to kill the carriers. Oh, the carriers are being taken down there nonetheless with the scan upgrade. He's focusing on the carriers directly. Kills a turret there, there's no more detection for those Dark Templars. Dark Templars are gonna clear up the middle there. Still Observer there is alive. Goliaths are moving forward very slowly, but he's focused on killing the carriers. More carriers are here on the way inside the base. Gonna push forward with that tank. And this is gonna be a very close game here. We have been seeing action for the last 10 minutes. But it's kind of a Jojo yo-yo moment back and forth. The carriers not really getting much done, and the Goliaths here are progressing forward. And this game is gonna get progressively harder for Trisha as those upgrades on those Goliaths keep improving to tier 2 and tier 3. He's even adding on 
um, ghosts now for ghost lockdown. I'm gonna try to lock down some of those carriers there. Like Templar, they're killing units there on the low count. No vessel there on the scene. Trish is gonna throw away a lot of pros because he has 76 pros, 22,000 minerals. It's something he could have thought of earlier, but he was so busy defending that he couldn't. But the Reavers there under the carriers are doing a lot of work, and once again, somehow Trisha is able to repel the attacks coming in from JH. Which was not something I expected to be seeing here. He's now switching over to Valkyries. Valkyries are amazing against carriers, and Kratom is the only thing that counters Valkyries are, in my opinion, Arbiters. But even Arbiters have a weakness if you spread out those Valkyries, but Trisha here has the upper hand for now. More gateways being built there on his proxy base. Tanks are rolling in, Goliaths are rolling in, he's got a vessel here on the scene now, he's gonna use the EMP on the carriers once he has 100 energy, but the carriers at the moment are 10 in number. Shields are, ooh, the Valkyries are doing a lot of work now, but the Corsairs are coming in to kill the Valkyries, Valkyries are gonna go down very quick here on the side. Goliaths coming in entering as well, but the Valkyrie damage is still dealing damage to those carriers, and two carriers have almost gone down, no, three carriers have almost gone down. But there's too few units here from JH there in the fight to take down the carriers. The carriers are going to kill the tanks. The Valkyries there on the side are trying their best. Hanging close to the turrets. Ooh, wait. This might be it. This might be it. This might be it. He's spreading out his Valkyries there a tiny bit to prevent damage from stacking from the Corsairs. It looks like the carriers here are going to go down. Or not. Are they? He's going to be cutting it very, very close. More Corsairs coming in to kill the Valkyries, but he's keeping his Valkyries here to the edge, very close to his turrets there to protect them. More units are on the way, although his base is a little bit blocked here. But he does have, I think, 5, 5, 5, 16 factors there that should be enough to fight against these carriers. Carriers still hammering away, there's only 6 carriers left alive. Valkyries are directly targeting the carriers, although the courses are there to clear out the Falcons, but Goliaths have arrived on the scene there as well, but Trisha is already switching over to a gateway mass, he still has some carriers there on the way, but he's mostly making gateway units here on the side, although he at the moment doesn't have that many units, most of the units are in the queue being produced, I think this is going to be it, although a drop is coming in here from the bottom side, there's nothing in between, no, two really, a really great lockdown there coming in from Oh no, Templar have arrived. Oh, another great lockdown there from JH prevents the shuttles from loading its Templars, and no SCPs are lost there for JH. And I think that means he secures himself a win here, but there's still a chance for Trisha to go with a massive counter hit here. Valkyrie's there, going for the carriers. Tanks are pushing forward slowly but surely, killing most of the base that Trisha has left here. But Trisha has built a new base here on the side. He's got a lot of Dragoons, Zealots there on the side, ready to go in and fight. The upgrades for JH are currently on level 2, almost level 3. But the level 3 upgrades for Trisha, no, he's level 2 armor and shield. So he didn't get level 2 armor or level 2 shield. Kind of, kind of surprising to see. He's going to spread out his units here on the middle and try to go for a backdoor attack here. While his base is being pushed in and hopefully he's going to attempt to go for a base trade here. But I don't think it's going to do all that much because there's a lot of buildings here blocking access to those tanks. They're in the back, he's balling up more and more. He's going to use all his minerals there to try and get his mass as big as he can. He no longer has any probes there. He's got 11 of them left. But most of them are here. Here, he's going to try to build a new base. He's going to try to go in with his mass attack. He's got six carriers there. He's got a lot, a lot, a lot of zealots and dragoons here. And all of JH's units are here, not in his base. So this is going to be a base trade. Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? I'm not sure. I don't know. The carriers there are taking a lot of damage from the Valkyries. But the Valkyries have gone down. No, he's ignoring the Valkyries. He's going for the tanks there. Because the tanks are the limiting factor that are denying his progression deeper into JH's base. The carriers now are going down though. Because they're getting focus fires by the Goliaths and the Valkyries. Which now means that he can no longer take out tanks. They're in the back. He's going to try to push in through the front here. But tanks are retreating back from the offensive a push here back into the middle of the map, but they're getting intercepted by two carriers and a couple of zealots there as well. It's gonna go in from the front here, it's moving forward and closer and closer, but tanks are seizing up in between those factories, and these dragoons cannot get closer. These two carriers are gonna to try to clear out the tanks there to enable these dragoons from pushing in. He's trying to stop this from happening as well, but there's simply too many tanks there that these dragoons cannot fight into. And level 3 upgrades have finished there from JH against the 2 2 upgrade, 2 to 3 upgrades from Trisha. And it looks like Trisha's mass is falling short. Trisha is not able to make it happen. 
is not able. With all these tanks here, have me clear it out. He still has 13,000 minerals to throw away. He has a lot of these two nexus here to make new probes, make new probes there as well. But those two tanks there are stopping it from happening. He's gonna try, he's gonna try, but the lockdown comes there down there on a dragoon. He's got a couple more goes there as well. And yeah, this looks like a done deal because now he has a lot of tanks here sieged up in between these factories. There's no way for Twisha to kill those tanks because there's simply too many structures in between. So whenever he reaches this, his units are already dying. He's making raids there to use Cloak to kill those units coming in as well. The tanks each up there on the side or anything that walks too closer, he gets taken down by those siege tanks there as well. Pulling new probes and Trisha calls the GG because I think he knows, I think he realizes that yeah, he kind of, he kind of messed up this game. I mean the fight here in his base was very intense, went on for about 15 minutes, very intense but not quite the results he was looking for, and JH simply came out on top with a very solid macro and good control and good decision making. So yeah, kind of interesting game. That was game number two. The score is 1-2-1. One, one. one win for JH, one win for Trisha. And now we're going for game number three to see who is going to be the winner. All right. So the heat is manageable. I'm still alive, though I'm I'm feeling pretty close to dying because for some reason, casting and talking warms up your body, so it starts to feel hotter and hotter and hotter. Plus, my laptop is for some reason Starcraft makes my laptop run on maximum GPU. Not sure why, because Starcraft doesn't really use all that much. It's, I think it's just a very poor optimization on Blizzard's end, where the game just randomly causes your laptop or computer to run at maximum. So my laptop is very, 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 very warm and it's heating up the room as well. So that's really not a great combination. So let's see what's gonna happen here. Oh, I'm gonna slow it down because I already see what's happening. Uh, Trisha here on the middle left, of course JH there on the top right. Playing the Terran, JH of course again on the pro route. Is, Trisha is going for a Dragoon build order. Which of course is exemplified by Python into an assimilator, into a gateway, into a cyber core, into two more gateways there. You'll have just enough gas to build, uh, to get singularity charge and three dragoons, and just enough minerals as well to finance it. And then he'll be going for an offensive move here on JH. But JH has in the past had some success defending against this, but also I've seen him fail quite hard. Or well, get outplayed basically. That's how you call it. He got outplayed a couple times against his build order. It's a pretty hard build order to hold, and you have to do very specific things as a Terran. And if you don't do those very specific things, you're going to be having a bad time. So JH won't be finding Trisha in time. He's scouting the entire bases, but he's not. Oh, he's counting the chokes, but he doesn't find a pylon. He did see this probe there though, so he knows that I should be finding a pylon. And if I don't find a pylon here in the choke means he's up to something else. And yes, indeed, Trisha is up to something else. He's got Singularity Charge on the way, three Dragoons are on the way as well, which spells some trouble for JH. JH finds it though, he finds it with that SCV. He's gonna have to build a bunker here in the front very quick, finish an academy, get uh, marine range, and pray to the gods that his repair on the bunker will be enough. Because those Dragoons, oh, they're going to get distracted by that SCV there. So they're going to chase that SCV and kill the SCV first before going for the attack. He kills the SCV there very quickly, easily. He's going to move into the front here in front of JH space and space his Dragoons in a line here just outside of the bunker range and then kill the bunker or at least force JH to pull two or three or four Marines here through the front to repair the bunker. So Dragoons are going to keep streaming out for JH. He added on a second assimilator so we can start building a Robo Facility there in addition to his Dragoons as well. There is the Robo Facility. So you're going to go for a Reaver as well. So Dragoons, Reavers, maybe just a shuttle and shuttle the units in over the hill. But I think this is going to be the most interesting game in this series. Because this always means a lot of action. Building a pile there in the front as well to maybe build cannons or another Robo Facility to shorten the distance so that he only has to make a reaver here and crawl it to the front. Singularity charge, not yet. Singularity charge is finished. He goes in, but he goes in a little bit too early. 
So he's waiting for a couple more seconds and then we're going to be seeing those Dragoons lined up perfectly to attack this bunker. There he is, perfectly lined up. Moves these forward a little bit. We've got uh, Marine Range already on the way there for JH. He kills the bunker. There's a lot of Marines here. They don't have stem upgrade. They do have medics there as support. They don't have range. So they're getting picked off really quickly there. Trisha gets a huge hit there on JH who has pulled 5 SCPs to the front. He only has 23 SCBs there, so that's pretty painful in terms of having to repair and lose a lot of income there as well, which gives Trisha a huge edge here. Trisha is going to try to snipe those SCPs there. He kills one SCP, kills two, almost loses a Dragoon. Oh, he's going to lose a Dragoon there, he's being very greedy. Kills another SCP, that no, he kills medics and marines. So medics and marines are pushing forward, but the uh, marine range upgrade has finished up there for... JH, so now Trisha is gonna have a really tough time trying to get within range of those bunkers because Dragoons have 8 range, uh, Marines and bunkers have 7 range and it's very hard to exactly find the exact spot and sometimes it's not even worth it because it's so hard to get those Dragoons in the exact correct range without spending too much time on it. We've got a factory there, no, engineering bay there on the way, factory here on the way in the back, scan there in, uh, being researched there in the back, finishing the command center, adding on a second gas. So he's doing quite well, he's got stim upgrade on the way there as well, and he's gonna build a turret there in the front too, he's putting Dragoons up on the hill. Now that is some big brain play. He's gonna use the hill advantage here, I think, to take down those bunkers here on the side. I've not seen this done before. I've not seen this. Maybe he's going to try to bait JH into an offensive move there. I'm not too sure, I'm not sure. But this is something I've not seen yet. This is something completely different from what we usually see. This is a first time experience of seeing this happen. He's got a Citadel there on the way. Zealot Lax on the way, level 1 weapon on the way. He's playing a very low economy build on only a single Nex. And he pulled some probes off of his gas. To get more minerals, he's getting adding on more gateways there as well to have a bigger mass. He's moving his dragoons are into position. They're on the side, but they cannot shoot on the low ground. They can't. Sh they can't hit this. They can't hit it. All right. That's, 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 he's moving there in position. He's putting his reavers there on the low ground. Zealous there in the shuttle as well. But anything that comes close might get attacked by those dragoons. I think that's his plan. But I think the dragoon range is not big enough because they can hit to about here. As you can see, the oh, he's gonna kill some of them marines as they're getting close. The reaver there unloads next to the logo. The shuttle just stays alive because the goons are killing the marines as they get close to the shuttle. This is actually really smartly played there from Trisha. Wasn't expecting to be seeing this. Reaver there stays alive, barely though. Shuttle also still alive. Killed a couple of marines there on the side. He's gonna try to keep killing marines time and time again. He goes in once again and kills more marines. And the marines still cannot go for the shuttle. Dragoons are behind it. Goes, picks it up, flies out once again. Another shuttle there on the bottom side. Two weavers inside that shuttle. There's no turrets here on the bottom. There's only a single marine. There's nothing in between his path to the marine, the S to the minerals. And Trisha is very slowly, but surely losing units here on the top side. The reaver went down. The reaver's still alive there. He's picking up and flying dragoons onto the low ground. But the shuttle there coming in from the bottom side while he's being distracted there on the top side. And this is going to be the point of contention. Reavers unloading, Reavers shooting, Reavers getting all the SCV kills and there's only 16 SCVs left there for JH. He just cleared out those units there on the top side with his tanks, but he did what he came to achieve. He achieved SCV murder. He's microing his shuttle here very well, keeping his Reavers alive there and the shuttle as well. And no, neither of the Reavers go down and JH is in the worst possible scenario you could possibly imagine. Can go close there. Oh, the Reavers almost go down, the shuttle almost goes down as well, he's unloading the Reavers there, it's, it's the last ever, but the Reavers are going down, he kills one more Marine, but JH manages to fight off this attack. Very well played there from both players. JH though, definitely threw on the short end of the stick. Trisha playing this very, very well. But do note, because Trisha has only a single Nexus, he's adding on a second one here on the top to try and boost up his economy, to try and propel himself into the next phase, but do know JH has already already has two command centers. And the fact that Trisha only has a single Nexus means his pro count is lower than it would be if he went for a plus one Nexus earlier. 
which also limits his offensive ability because his income is simply too small to throw out massive scale attacks. So his attacks will be of small scale and he will only be able to kill small amounts of units unless he makes some insane micro moves. But I don't think that's gonna be happening. Although his shuttle micro has been very, very, very sweet to look and behold. The fact that his economy is so small is slowing him down. He does have a lot of units, has about 138 supply, has a lot of units here in the front, so he might be going for a funnel attack here on those bunkers, which I think is a very good choice to go for. It does appear to be the case. Oh, well, he's loading up his shuttles first. Loading up his shuttles first, going for a frontal attack and a side attack there, or maybe he's going to load those shuttles there on top of the bunkers. Tank already being moved to the front, everything is being moved to the front, Marines there are coming, oh he's running straight into those Reavers, the Reavers are mowing down all the units, but he loses two Reavers there before he can kill and mow down most of the Marines. And the Zealots there finishing up, the Reavers are going to clear out those tanks on the top side, the Goons coming in from the front to kill those engineering bays there, hovering inside the front, but the drop comes in at the same time, but the drop goes down before it can arrive on the scene. So three different forms of attacks there from Trisha, but JH holds it all. It was really close, but he holds it, and it's SCV count is back on 35, only 12 behind on Trisha, who's only just now finished his second Nexus, which means about 8, well, about 12, uh, I mean 14 pros per 3 minutes. If he never misses a single second, of course, of pro production. So he'll be on about 70 very soon. That's what he's aiming for, about 70. He's finishing, he's finished preparing his another attack. Cut Dragoons there, Zealots there as well. He's preparing himself for a tank drop by putting Dragoons there on the sides while he's building cannons because he knows that a tank drop is a real option there for JH. JH has no dropship though, he has no control tower yet. Still adding on tank there, trying to defend. He's on 100 supply against 161. Drops coming in here from the bottom side. He's gonna be flying in very soon. He finds a nice path here around the turret, but there's no Marines there in between. So he's gonna fly in all the way to the SCVs. SCVs gonna have to pull away. Three Reavers are on the low ground. He's gonna kill a lot of stuff there. He kills the tank. SCVs are running away just in time. But this means all the Marines here are going down though. Tanks are getting taken down there as well. And now those Reavers are outside of the range of the tanks being relocated a little bit further up there on the top corner. SCVs there are gonna kill the Reaver, but the Reaver stays alive. Reaver in the back is gonna go down eventually and he kills about Six SCVs there in the end, but there was definitely, well actually he killed a lot of marines there, a lot of tanks there as well, so that is a pretty good result there for Trisha. Also slow GH mining town down by a lot. That is overall not the best result, but it is a significant result where he did get some damage down on his opponent. And it looks like Trisha spotted that dropship moving out and moving closer to the, uh, well, its goal, these probes there next to the Nexus. But Trisha knows it's coming, so he's putting his units in place to intercept it. His base is still rather small, but that is of course because he only has... Uh, he was on a single Nexus economy for a pretty long time, but he has been throwing out attacks pretty consistently. Tanks are unloading, but they are too far away, and they're gonna go down before they get any probe kills. Gets a single probe kill, but it's not that significant. Which now means that we're gonna be seeing Trisha go for the next round of attacks. Still only on 8 gateways, 3 robos, and... He does have 180 supply there, but he's he's mostly focusing on attacking while spending his money. And do note, only the 64 probes, 12 or 13 minutes in, so he's not yet caught up in terms of economy. JH is on 47 SCVs there, 108 supply once again. He's got tanks spread out across his base, but a mass drop is coming in here from the top side. He's gonna have to intercept this with these marines. Will the Marines be enough? Will the Marines do it? He's spimming his Marines, he's focusing on the shells. Two shells have already gone down, but a lot of units are unloading. A lot of Zealots are in the mix, gonna to try to kill a couple of Zealots with splash damage from the tanks. He managed to kill a couple of them, but the Zealots are mostly there to just kill units, distract, pull those SCVs off the minerals, and get JH distracted and busy and occupied with things he'd rather not be occupied with. He wants to build his base, grow bigger, get more money, but that's something he's being denied. Oh, tank drop here, tank drop, tank drop, he killed, I think, oh, he kills 15, maybe even 16 probes, so he actually got something done there, so both players are now on the same amount of workers, which is actually really good for the Terran. You're gonna take a miracle for Trisha to actually kill JH at this point, he does have a mass drop there loaded up, but losing those 16 probes at this time in the game is pretty, pretty bad. 
lot of drops are already moving out, but they're gonna see each other. They saw each other there. So Trisha knows it's coming. He has the Dragoons there in position to intercept it. Dragoons there up on the hill finally being finished off, but that means that units are located in the wrong spot. He's gonna pick up those last couple of Zealots and fly in. And this time the Marines are misplaced. So he has a free path. Tank up there, coming down. Tank up hits nothing. Units alone. Oh, there's three, four, five, six Templars there in the mix, but he does not have Storm. He does not have Storm. Oh my god, he does not have Storm. He's morphing Archons there though, and Zealots are tearing through those Marines and Zealots instead of the Storms. But the fact that he didn't have Templar, have Psionic Storm finished, means that he deals pretty much no damage. Although, a lot of lost mining time there. He killed a couple of SCPs there with some Zealots. But in the end, the Archon gets no SCP kills. But once again, JH is on a very low supply count. He keeps losing units. He keeps losing mining time. He is not growing his base. He's still on four barracks, three factories. He hasn't added on any turrets there on the sides. Although he has built a nice little wall there in the front to keep units out. Although units are being shoveled in. Which kind of defeats the point. Trisha, once again, has not yet added on to his base. He's not adding on to his base. He's so focused on attacking. This is a very scrappy game, but he's so focused on attacking that he's not really building anything. But as long as he keeps getting results with his attacks, his base size does not matter at all. Tank there, and Lowe's tank is too far away, or is it? Ooh, it almost got the kill. It almost got the kill on the probes here, on the side. That would have been 12 probe kills at least. Would have made a small difference, but it doesn't wind up making a difference in the end. Flies in once again from the bottom side. It's going to make its way all the way in. The loading there next to the Marines and the tanks. And loading a lot of Templars. This time you just have Storm upgrade and he kills a lot of Marines. Oh, a lot of SPs are going down. About 40 SPs going down to the triple Storm there coming in from Trisha. Even Storm with some Marines. And that means that we have seen JH's supply count drop by about 60 there. Which is absolutely stupendously massive. JH is having a really, really tough time here. He's having a really, really, really tough time here. And Trisha is finally adding on to his base, although it's mostly cannons. He's pretty much satisfied with his method of attacking here, because he knows that he's keeping JH small, so his main focus, his main purpose, and his main goal should be to keep throwing out attacks. It isn't important to keep adding on to his base. What is important is that he keeps JH small and keeps throwing out attacks. If he just ups the frequency of his attacks, JH will perish very soon. That's what we're going to be seeing here on the next attack, I'm sure. Although maybe it's going to take a couple more attacks because there's still a lot of tanks here inside of JH's base, which are spaced pretty far away from his command center, actually. Like, they protect this entire portion, but they don't protect this portion in the back, which might be a little bit of an oversight from JH, but the shuttles are coming in. He's sniping the shuttles, but the shuttles are loading simply too many turrets, too many zealots, too many Templars, too many reavers. They're on the low ground. He's going to run away, but he gets stormed, but he doesn't lose any of his SVs. Though SVs here are oh, definitely going down. But now he has a lot of zealots there attacking the command center, and there's no SVs there in the back to repair, and there's no units as well to kill the zealots. But he's going to take down the command center there just in time before units arrive back on the scene. And the tanks being placed too far away is hurting JH in this case. Loses command center. His V's there are not mining. He's got pretty much no minerals. The Zells are clearing out what is left. And yeah, JH calls the GG. He knows it's over. And Trisha wins with a very scrappy game, but a very interesting game. It's a lot of very out of the out of the ordinary stuff that we saw in this last game. Trisha played it pretty in inventively. Pretty inventive. I like the creativity. I kind of dislike the fact that he wasn't building his base whatsoever. But as you can see, as long as your attacks are effective and strong and get results and keep your opponent small, you don't need much of a base. You don't need to spend much time on building a base because time spent on building a base down to the last detail means that you're spending less time attacking. And less time spent attacking means more time to recover and build up for your opponent. And that is something Trisha had in mind. So even though his base is small, he always had in mind, I gotta keep attacking, I gotta keep up the pressure, I gotta keep my opponent small, I gotta keep him occupied, I gotta prevent him from getting too big. Because as we saw in game number 2, when JH gets too big, he is actually too big for you to handle. He will find a way to win the game once he has survived that early stage of defending and, and securing his income and his economy up to the point until he has a big base. And he never was allowed to get a big base. 
So yeah, pretty interesting series. Trisha wins 2-0. to zero. We didn't see the highest level of play. It wasn't the Humber Sasu, for example, but this was kind of an interesting series. And I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope Trisha enjoyed it as well. Thank you for sending me this. And I hope to be seeing more of your material in the near future. And yeah, the temperatures are going to go down within the next couple of days. Although it's going to be uh, 35 today, 35 tomorrow. And then on Friday, it's going to be 29 degrees. And then on Saturday, it's going to be 27. So the temperature is showing a very, well, a very small decline. So I'm going to be posting and uploading more videos within the next um, four or five days when the temperature has calmed down. Because I'm kind of noticing it's become very hot in here. My laptop is running overdrive. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good day and goodbye. And don't forget to like the video. And if you want, well, you can subscribe as well. It's an option too. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.